money. Let's talk money. I don't have your money. I know I'd be a lot happier with some extra cash. Is this about money? Obviously, this is all about money. Oh, man, we got bills to pay, buddy. (laughs) With practical tips and a focus on scripture, let's talk money. With Dave and Reb. From more than enough, real conversations about money for real people. Let's talk money. Are you ready to talk money, Reb? I'm ready to talk money. Well, here we go. I want to stump, jump right in. <laughs> you're going right to stumble stumble your right way into in. the show today. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit like that. I had a little workout this morning and went, yeah, you know, you have days you walk in the gym and it's like, pump it up. And then you have days you walk in the gym and you're like, what am I doing here? So <laughs> this morning was a little bit uh, more the, what am I doing here? But you're not doing that on the show today. No. No, no. you're you're not saying that to me. Like, what am I doing no, here? No, no, no. Okay, it was good. just my workout this morning. So, <laughs> you know, so anyways, welcome to the show. And uh, thank you so much. If you're a first time listener, welcome, sit down, grab a cup of coffee, enjoy the show. If you been listening for a long time, then you know we're just going to jump into the conversation. We talk about the hard issues around money. Today's show is sponsored by Tim Jenkins and the team at Trinity Family Wealth. We we sometimes introduce when often I'll introduce you know these these uh, guests. Usually their guests are somebody that's sponsoring the show, and there's a lead. But there's a whole team of people uh, that work with Tim, and I've met a few of them. And so want to shout out for the Trinity Family Wealth Group and what they do. And, uh, and just so you know, I, I was just going to yeah. say, Tim's going to be on the show. He's going to be on the show He's next week. Show that's next the week. plan. Anyway, yes. so um, we're anticipating we've had him on the show before. You can go to more than enough.ca and just um, in the little search bar uh, on the radio page, you can mm-hmm. put tim jenkins and you'll get the shows that he's been with us on so he has a lot of great thoughtful things to say Mm -hmm. um biblical understanding of legacy and wealth so yeah and i think that's what i appreciate about tim is just that that perspective that uh you know tim often works with people that are that he challenges for generational wealth for Mm -hmm. long-term wealth Mm -hmm. so that's that's fun um and and to hear tim's perspective on money so yeah, so great. The show next week with so, um, you. but bef- so we uh, like. Did you say already? Go to morethanough.ca, not mine.ca. No, go to any podcast. Like, just go look. Let's talk money with Dave and Reb, and you'll find us. We're on YouTube, obviously, because, well, not obviously. Some of you may. Some of you don't know that if you're listening on a Friday morning, that's not the only time you can listen to us. You can go listen to us anytime. Mm-hmm. Uh, like and get it off of these places so so and, and truly the best place is more than enough.ca it's got the own and player. we say it's you the just... best place because we own more than enough <laughs> <laughs> well yes but 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 it's okay, right there it, it's right like at the top of the page it says radio show you click the button you get there and, and you get to hear the next show so yeah. anyway i don't control anybody else's but we do get to control <laughs> okay that, so all right fair enough anyway so we are coming up to april 30th i and if i was uh doing a call-in show, I'd say, you know, the third caller to call in with the answer to what happens on April 30th would, would, would win. Would win I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, we don't have that. So, um, yeah. Will, maybe <laughs> you over in the, can tell us. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm just reminding you that it's tax season. The deadline's coming up. And, Deadline is coming up. And yeah. for any late, um, uh, if, if you go, if, yeah, if you go the day over, then then there's a, there's a, a fee, fee, there's and a the penalty, and, and, and the guess penalty what? Penalty increased this year, I believe. And we don't want you giving money away to, for that. So, so you know, again, we're uh, if you've listened to the show, you know we we're pretty hot on on proactive financial planning, and yes. so you've got basically a week to get your stuff together and then that really puts the the crunch on whoever is doing your tax return if you're doing it yourself then have at or go if you're bringing it to to somewhere it then might be now weird. now we're in the hot zone you may not be able to get it done on time because everybody's uh, i'll say in the tax world everybody's 
pile is pretty high right about now. Yeah. So. Anyway, not to put that fear in you or anything, no but fear. I did want to, I wanted to tell everybody we had a tax prep party. If yes. if you listened earlier this year and you were just rolling your eyes at, at Dave and I for coming up with this idea. Well, I think it was Dave's idea, actually. Dave and Braun, idea, yeah. and we had our tax team and we were telling you on one of the shows how to have a tax prep party. Yeah. Well, Dave insisted that we have one with our two older children and so we did yeah. and we just wanted to report to you we had a tax prep party and i will say it was a great idea mm-hmm. we actually did it on zoom my son was supposed to get snacks he didn't so but we, i but i got a, a little snack so i had a little snack there just yes we had and he had snack we all had a snack mm-hmm. but we just didn't you know go big on snacks but um it actually was quite interesting i was tallying numbers for Mm-hmm. like our hydro because we have an office at home and i just said to Ju- my son justice can you just tally these while i showed out the numbers i you it was phenomenal i did not have to add it all up mm-hmm. he did it for me he sat there with his calculator and we did that for a few things there are other things that they just dave reminded them please go get this and upload this to to our uh, portal at more than enough because we have a tax department as you know and um actually it turned out really great so if you're kind of like uh, you guys are a little weird. That's okay. You can call us weird, but you know, you it know actually what, I what the most? actually it was lovely. Mm-hmm. To what do I it appreciated together. the most was was actually the togetherness. Like we didn't have to share we, we didn't have to share personal information. They were uploading their stuff. the The nice part was is we were finding the stuff and then right away just getting it uploaded, so we, getting it in there. So, so by the end of the party, we'd all sent in basically everything we needed, and we'd uh, I won't say we had fun but it was way more fun than doing it alone. I would I would say exactly that. And then we wanted to get our number from our dentist. And mm-hmm. we all I always forget that. I always forget just to get her to give me an income tax mm-hmm. sheet for that purpose to declare it or whatever. And I'm like, oh man, did it again. And but but you remind each other. Like it was actually quite an interesting experience. And I would say I would say doing it together online was effective because you can run and go get what you need. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do it together in a group as we encouraged you to do, but you bring your computer, you bring the checklist more than enough has a checklist and uh, and you can go to the website and get that. But anyway, it was just really interesting. I wanted to tell you all that that's what we did and it worked great. So next year, if it's too late for you now, next year, have a tax prep party. And if you really like are groaning over tax preparation, it actually is helpful to do it together. So Okay. And here's one little encouragement that did make it easier is, is that now, right now, go get the envelope, get a big brown one or, right. or a, yes. or, or yes. a file folder or whatever, and start throwing stuff into there. Start throwing, um, you know, there's things that come in in the mail and, and all of that, that um, just have one folder. That's really what happened was, is we opened up our tax folder. I started making piles and different things for things that I thought, oh, is this taxable or not? I don't know all the answers. So I just total it up and say, okay, this is the the amount. But having that folder with all of the stuff, and it was pretty thick. <laughs> we were trying to figure out how to make Nico, our dog, a dependent. But, you know, I don't yeah. think our tax guy is going for that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> how to write off <laughs> vet, vet bills, bills. right uh, <laughs> if we figure it out we'll do a podcast on that so anyway <laughs> just there's our little report about tax season and our tax prep party okay so i want to read some verses from isaiah uh 43 verse 1 to 3 some of you feel like we've been talking about this are feeling a little underwater mm. feeling like a little overwhelmed um we are seeing houses in certain areas of the city all go up for sale because they're million dollar homes and people are not able to uh pay the mortgage and the 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 news out there isn't wonderful but the news from the lord is wonderful and he says this to israel and um Perhaps we're taking it out of context, but it is a promise of his nearness. It is a Mm. promise revealed through Christ to us. And he said this, Isaiah 43, But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not. I could just stop there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I have formed you, 
So don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me of Matthew 6 when Jesus says, don't be afraid, little flock. Mm -hmm. That is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Anyway, fear not. I have redeemed you. I've called you by your name. Mm -hmm. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, even financial waters, Mm -hmm. I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. Um, I have a little note, my side, mar- side margin I wrote, we will not be over f- overthrown mm. um, by the rivers that overwhelm us. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, and I can't read that. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia, and Seba in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. Mm. I could just, that's a good place to rest, Mm -hmm. Dave. Mm -hmm. It is a good place. But why are we reading these verses today? And he's going to say, um, I don't know. Of course I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the show where Dave and Rev talk about the hard issues around, around money. money and, this- and you've just re- re- read a verse that talks about how deeply the love of God is, the, the, the deep waters of the love of God, if I can keep that metaphor going. Since you have been are precious in my sight, mm. that's verse four, you've been honored and I love you. Mm. Um I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. When you walk through the waters, I will be with you and through the flame. I, I'm paraphrasing it. That's the song. That's the song. That's the song. I yes. know. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't yes. it? That's why I'm, yeah, there's a song that says that. But when you pass through the waters, and there's why I chose that is because um, Dave uses. Dave uses a metaphor. I think it's a metaphor. Should we say it's a metaphor? Yeah, I think so. I think so, mm-hmm. if that's the right word. To to help us, to help clients, to help coaches at More Than Enough understand money in a different way to get our minds sometimes outside or look mm-hmm. at it from a different perspective, you talk about money as a currency. Right. And – um. We were talking about the other night, and I'm like, that would be a great discussion to have. Mm -hmm. So, can you tell me a little bit more? So, we've got the Lord promising that He will not allow these uh, rivers to overwhelm us. When we're in trouble, He is with us. Mm -hmm. And that is something that Jesus, His very essence and presence, um, when He came, demonstrated that he is with us and he is not leaving us and he's intimate and he cares about the details that he gets face to face with us Mm -hmm. as he walks along the road with us. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing we want to remind you today. As we talk about this idea of financial currency, the word currency and current are the same root word. Yeah. So isn't that interesting? And sometimes we don't think about that, but you talk a lot to more than enough clients about currency, but but how it's like water. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and a little bit of context there. So sometimes the context, and I will say often the context is, is really wrapped around, you know, how does money work? Like somehow that question comes out is, is I don't understand money or uh, I, I, I want to know how money works. And the and this is why we say it's a metaphor the best metaphor that i can think of in that as i've studied and as i've looked and as i've read scripture and uh, and and i think you know the 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 comparison between money and the properties of money and the properties of water um they're just so similar they're just they just correlate so well um and of course then you look and you go well there's current when we talk about water we talk about current we talk about the 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 flow underneath you may see up on the top of the water like nothing happening and then underneath there's a current and the current can actually be going the opposite direction than what's on top, or it can be going the same direction, depending on the circumstances and where you're at. You know, there are times where you look at the water and you see the current, but it's bubbling, it's going up, you know. So, um, and that's the same with money. 
There, there are often times where we look at our neighbor and we go, oh, they're rich, they're doing well, they're doing, and it's like there's a current underneath that's saying, no, 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 they're just pedaling as fast mm-hmm. as they can. So, you know, that's one of the, um, I'll say, metaphors that I use for don't look at your neighbor. You have no idea what's going on underneath the surface. Just like when we look at water, we have no idea what's going on under what's under the surface until you jump in, right? Um, and and some currents are more dangerous than others. And again, we we can don't take the metaphor too too far, but there there really are so many correlations between the properties of water and the properties of money. Okay, so why don't we start at the beginning? Sure. If I was a client coming to you and you're like, uh, the let me go backtrack just a mm-hmm. second. So a few years ago, someone had come and said, "Oh, I wish I was like you and Reb. You know, you just have it all together." <laughs> And yes, we laughed. Yeah. Um, you have it all together and, and you know, you know how to talk about money, you know what you're doing with your money. And Dave's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'll never that was the first time I had heard you just use this mm-hmm. this idea. Um and he said, wait a minute, there's shifting seasons, there's mm-hmm. shifting paths, um, there are different needs, there are different um, income levels, actually. And, and it's a current, and Reb and I are still learning, what season are we in? Where are we, where are we walking out our financial journey together? And we're always learning, we have to readjust, have mm-hmm. to readapt. And, and I guess the path of water is the same way. So that's where I, I heard it, you talk about it the first time. So so, so, like, talk to me like a, a coachy or a client. Right. What, what, so, are you, what are you going to so tell me about water and money? Let's let's just look at the properties of money. So, first off, um, if I want to get, uh, and I we have a, a, a cup of water in front of us. Yes. That's that's, that's kind of nice that mm-hmm. that happened here. Mm-hmm. So, a cup of water in front of us, but without the vessel, without the cup, without some sort of mechanism to contain the water. What happens? The water goes everywhere. It yeah, just spills you everywhere, hold it. right? Well, same with money. If we don't have some sort of mechanism or tool to to contain the water, then it's just going to go everywhere. It'll come, it'll go, and we don't know. So you can see how that that correlates as well. You know, we think of the cup, and and um, you know, I'm going to use the you know our spending plan as the vessel. And money comes into our spending plan. And then I can very, I mean, I can take a big gulp, I can take a small, small gulp, I can, I can regulate, but you know, again, you can start seeing how the properties that are at work and the water inside there, if I shake it, if I shake it up too much, then it'll spill out. Right. Um, and, and so, again, if we think of pouring water into that provision is God's domain that he he works on the provision. And so when he pours into our cup, he uses the metaphor in scripture, you know, my cup overflows and in different contexts like that. And I just borrow that for money and say, uh, okay, so the first property is, is we need a vessel, some sort of mechanism to, to, to hold the water. Right. And then there's only, you know, again, when a cup fills up, there's only so much room here at the top. Once, <laughs> once we get to the top, we need a different vessel. We need a bigger vessel. So different vessels are going to hold the, the, the different amounts of water for different purposes. So are you talking about like investing? Like, in, like, oh, like, sure. do you have, you have surplus? Like I'm just pointing at my cup, but yeah. if, if I have water running out of the cup, I need to, make sure it goes in a certain place. Yeah, and the, this cup would not be how I would want to store 10,000 gallons of water. Like, the, this isn't the right tool. Right. And so sometimes with money, we're trying to do use money, and we're actually just using the wrong tool, the wrong vessel. And so we, you know, but we've been trying, we've been trying, and it's the vessel that we've always used, right? So, so that's one, I would say, part of that metaphor of, of just – when we talk about the principles of money and the principles of water, one is, is we need a vessel and, and we need one that we understand. We need one that has the right capacity. Um, there are some people, and I'll give you the example, who should never, ever have a credit card. Why? Because they just don't know how to use the tool. Right. 
And so any opportunity they've gotten, they've, they've gotten themselves in trouble. And so I say, well, then don't use the tool, but everybody else does. Well, that, but that goes matter. back to your statement. We've just got to look at our own story, mm -hmm. our own situation and circumstance and not at our neighbor, which is a whole other show. Yeah. And then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give you another principle um, that, that relates to that. If we treat money the same as everyone else, the default current in our in our current <laughs> lots of currents the default current right now in north america is debt the if you don't do anything you don't have a, a you know you don't manage money you don't think about it you you will just find yourself in debt that's the default that's the way the river flows so to speak and so we need to again uh if if we use that uh keep that metaphor of of going down a river, we've got a vessel, we're in a boat, and guess what? The boat has certain properties that are gonna get us from point A to point B, right. right? So we can use the current to actually move us, right? And again, so water um, has is very versatile. I'm gonna say there's the principle. So water has a lot of versatile uses and how we use it, it can actually do other work as well. Right. Same as money, right? It, we look and, and again, we can see all kinds of examples of, you know, if I have money um, that is going to work for me, it's investing, it's generating more money, it's creating some opportunities that I can use in different parts of my life. It's the same principles with money is it can be, or sorry, same principles with money as with water. It can be used in all kinds of versatile ways. Almost the sky is the limit in so, terms of our creativity. So so in one sense, we need to have the the tool to contain it. That would give us, that it was, would help us move us to purpose. So I'm just thinking you're talking about this cup as a spending mm -hmm. plan. Um, but then you have the idea that there is a current. Water is current and mm -hmm. a, a, a current, I actually went and looked it up, is a mar, because I love this definition. Mm -hmm. A large movement of water in one, Oh my goodness. A large movement of water in one general direction is a current. Currents can be temporary or long lasting. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. is was the was interesting. Yep. They can be near the surface or deep in the ocean. And I was just thinking about that you've got different currents that take you and the current takes you different places, yep. right? So so you're in that boat, you said you got the investment current or current, or you've got the that that credit current yeah. and you're using that to take you places but it actually is going to it's it's going to get you in trouble the that 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 the water the the river that holds the current is going to dry up it, eventually mm -hmm. if you're not if you're not um being responsible or um well think about being mindful know, think about uh um an, an undertow we we know right. the dangers of an undertow right. and and i do some kite surfing and windsurfing and we're always very aware of the potential dangers of an undertow um, because you'd hit the water and and then it would suck you under and right so this is just about is the undertow terrible is the under no the, the undertow is just there it's just a thing it's amoral right and that's the same with money it is is debt terrible well we can't the effects of debt can be deadly yes just like the effects of the undertow can be deadly and so you know in uh, in an undertow if you get caught in an undertow they 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 actually say don't fight it and try and swim to the left or to the right uh, because eventually you'll get to the edge of the undertow and then you'll be able to to surface or you'll be able to find your way um, but you know the minute that you get into an undertow there's a certain response that you need to do if you're going to survive so what we're seeing is that like panic right we we get or stress or fear and you know, just by talking about it, just by facing it, just by laying out, okay, how much debt do I actually have? Mm -hmm. um, how much... Uh, Recognizing that I'm I'm in an undertow. undertow. So that's awareness, okay, what we right, call yeah, awareness, right. right? In our finances. And then coming up with a plan, but 
but, but this is a strategic move. So it takes intentional effort to get out of debt. It takes intentional effort to get out of an undertow, right? Yeah. And then it takes time. You know, when you're in an undertow, every second feels like an hour, right? Like everything slows down and you're, 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 you're doing what you need to do over the period of time to get you where you need to go. And then, and then really it's about just holding on and, and per, the less panicked you are, the more you can preserve your own oxygen, the more you can preserve yourself to get uh, to, to that you'll you'll make it out. And it's the same with money, right? When we're talking about debt specifically, you know, it takes time, it takes awareness, it takes intentionality. Well, and 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 uh, my sister actually years ago when we were in Florida had an undertow experience, mm-hmm. and it it was she wasn't a great swimmer at the time, and um, it was the lifeguard that came. Sure. And I guess that ties back to, you know, a financial coach, what we do, a good pastor, a good friend who's there to come in, Mm -hmm. in that place where, where the, you seem overwhelmed. I mean, it goes back to the scripture we have today. There is nothing better when, when, when you're in distress than to have someone who's not in distress with you. Right. Yeah. And, And yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I love that my personality gets more stressed, but yours is just like calm. Like you, you just you come in with calmness, and that's exactly what you need. That lifeguard came in because he had confidence in what he was doing, and mm-hmm. and there are coaches, there are people f- uh, who are confident financially, and if we can just find those people, they are actually could be instruments of the Lord. Mm-hmm. So when it goes back to f- Isaiah forty three, you're not going to be overthrown when you're in the water um, because I am with you, but I've actually created people who can walk with you through this. Mm -hmm. So he often, we are his hands and feet, as we often say. And I I think that's really applicable in terms of a lifeguard or Mm -hmm. a coach or or an advisor. So we only got a minute left. And I just want to end with this thought. Like if you are thinking, I don't know how money works, or I want to learn a little bit more how money works, then really, and and I'll just encourage you, study the principles of water, study of how it moves and and how it it relates to the world around it. And then, uh, you know, not everything totally correlates, but, but boys, oh boys, God's given us a real gift in these these comparisons to be able to say wow so if i can use that as a as a as a guide for how i can use my money or how i can think about how i can think about money yes Mm -hmm. yeah great you want to pray sure Mm -hmm. father thanks so much for today and for um the world around us that teaches us um about our own journeys Mm -hmm. and how water and um current is so applicable to money and currency Lord, I pray that you would grant us wisdom, listeners wisdom, and that if they feel that they're in an undertow right now, that they could reach out to us or to you mostly, Mm -hmm. um, or to others in their life who, who just seem maybe a little bit stronger in this area. Lord, thank you uh, for our time. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, big shout out to Tim Jenkins uh, and the team at Trinity Family Wealth. Um, and I'm really looking forward yeah, to Tim to next coming week. next so week join and us having next the conversation. Week. And yeah, join it's us next, next week, week when he <laughs> talks money with us. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Let's Talk Money is a division of More Than Enough Financial Fitness, where God is transforming hearts and bringing hope for today and freedom for tomorrow. For more information or to comment on today's show, please visit morethanenough.ca.